Yeah, look here, make sure you see the camera. Okay, ready? One, two, one, two, three.
Good morning. 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 Sit down. Can I have my back? Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the second day of this wonderful conversation between His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, and uh, quantum uh, physicists uh, from Taiwan and, and the United States. Uh, we had a spectacular uh, set of talks yesterday. Uh, personally, I enjoyed it very much. I've enjoyed many of the questions that uh, his Holiness asked, and also in the afternoon we had a very, very vibrant and interesting discussion. So for those of you who have the time and interest, we, uh, I invite you to come to this afternoon's discussion as well. So uh, let us get started with the second day of talks. And uh, today, uh, the first session, we're going to hear about uh, something uh, called superconductivity. I'm sure most of you have heard of this. And this is one superconductivity. This is a type of phenomenon that, in my personal view, uh, would be very, very difficult to imagine in a classical world. A classical by classical world, I would mean something without quantum mechanics that 
most of us uh, are much more familiar with. So without much ado, let's uh, uh, go to the, uh, the talks. The first speaker we have is Professor Tinkwa Lee. He's an academician uh, of uh, uh, Academia Seneca in tai Taiwan, and he will be giving the first talk. Oops. Okay, let me flip to the right page so I can give the title of the talk. Emergent Macroscopic Quantum Phenomenon of Superconductivity. Please, Professor Lee. Thank you. Uh, Your Holiness, oh. everyone, good morning. Uh, this is, uh, my name is Tinghua Li from Academia Seneca. And uh, it is my great honor uh, to be able to share with you some of the most amazing and beautiful phenomena in the quantum world. Um, as uh, Professor Chen has said, this is not your ordinary experience, but yet this is reality, as I will show you. So, as a... As a, as a scientist, of course, we have to be based on everything on evidence. So, the, my first part, is to show you the evidence for why the phenomena is so special, why so interesting. And then, of course, as a physicist, we need to provide some understanding uh, to realize such a state is possible, and, uh, and you will see why it's so beautiful. And then, of course, we will discuss uh, Okay, superconductivity, the name is, uh, needs a little bit, the, the word needs a little bit more explanation. Super is, of course, means great. Uh, conductivity is super. What does that mean? Of course, uh, most of you probably have learned the super conductivity for a long time ago, but let me remind you, in case you forgot, that uh, this... Uh, Conductivity actually is a measure of how the material to carry an electric current. It is uh, inverse proportional to the resistance. What it means, if the conductivity is high, the resistivity is very low, or the resistance is very low. Now, the resistance, as you all probably imagine in your uh, middle school, that one has put in a battery, and the wire connected to a metal, and if your battery has potential drop, you see a current passing through, you take the voltage of your battery and divide by your current, you get a resistance. That everybody probably uh, know this, I'm just trying to remind you what this is. Lock. So this uh, resistance represents how easy for an electron charge to move through a metal. And it, uh, it provides uh, heat if you have resistance. Now, this resistance, of course, uh, as some of you may know, that, of course, varies with temperature. And we, in the material side, we all know we have an insulator, semiconductor, and metal you heard all the time. Now, what is a semiconductor in this plot? I show you is uh, the vertical axis is resistance. The horizontal axis is temperature. It varies with temperature. So semiconductor is that at a high temperature, it has a higher resistance, but then it goes down as temperature lower, the resistance becomes less and less, which it just means electron can be more easily go through the material. So it's getting easier and easier to go through. 
But suddenly, at a lower temperature, it becomes difficult again, much more difficult. And uh, compare this with the ordinary metal, which continually go down. The resistance keeps on reducing when temperature is lowered. And that's why this is called a semi, as you can see. You know, part of it looks like a metal, and the other part is not like a metal. It's so called a semiconductor instead of a conductor. Now, I have not shown you an insulator, because the insulator actually has very high resistance uh, all the time. And uh, this behavior of metal, of course, uh, it goes down very quickly, the resistance. So the electron okay. becomes yes. easier, yes. easier to go through yes. the material. Yes. The, 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 the usual wire we use these days are made of copper. Copper at the 20 degree Celsius or somewhere around here at the room temperature, that's the room temperature of today here is a little bit less than that. But then you go down, as temperature lower, it's keep on going down. It's go down by a factor 20, means divided by 20. So the conductivity increased by factor 20. As you go to lower, lower temperature, maybe say three Kelvin, you get a better, better conductor. So the, the, you can carry same voltage, you can carry more current. It's easy. It's like your water pipe in your house getting more easy to flow. Um, and uh, at a very low temperature, however, this resistance is not zero, which is small, maybe 20 times smaller than at the, right now at the room temperature, but it is not zero, okay? And uh, so this is the usual material behavior we are all familiar with, um, but it's related to resistivity. Now, the superconductivity was discovered in 1911 by an accident usually in the physics <laughs> discovery. And uh, what it mean by super? Actually, it's a little bit tricky. What do you mean by super? Actually, it means resistance is zero. We just call this kind of phenomena superconductivity. Actually, the real meaning, exact meaning, is that uh, the material has zero electric resistance. That's the definition, actually. And uh, yeah, this... So here, the, the electron that is being, electricity that is being charged through this yeah, um, medium. Yeah, but no resistance. So it's, it's I mean, uh, conceptually, is it seen more like a kind of a wave going through, or is it conceptually? Now we'll come to it. It's yeah. more complicated than that. <laughs> and we'll come to back to <laughs> that point. Okay. It will come to that. I will try to explain. But I mean, this is a, a gentleman got Nobel Prize in 1913, after two years after he has uh, reached, but actually for the prize, not for discovery of superconductivity, because he tried to lower the temperature. Remember, the zero absolute temperature, zero Kelvin, that's called Kelvin, it's absolute temperature, and it's minus 273 Celsius. Right now, we are at uh, about 15 degrees Celsius, and then imagine you have to go down 280 degrees downward. His Holiness was wondering whether they have put the AC on. Oh, yeah. Yes, so this, uh, and, uh, he, it is a surprise that he found uh, that uh, there is uh, this, uh, this uh, resistance drops to almost zero. It's a very... Yeah, he, he was just trying to go down to low temperature, cool and cool, and until he got about 1.8 Kelvin, that's uh, the record at that time, and he got Nobel Prize for that cooling. Uh, to lower temperature, almost zero Kelvin, but not yet. And uh, then at the 4.2 Kelvin, they see this resistance of mercury. Mercury is a metal at the usual temperature, and the resistance suddenly dropped by four order magnitude, about 0.1 to 10 to the minus five, and then dropping to 10 to the minus eight very quickly. But uh, so this is uh, 
uh, phenomena he discovered. But he didn't get Nobel Prize for this, okay? <laughs> uh, but it's a very strange phenomena because the resistance suddenly dropped by four order magnitude. Instead of just factor 20, as I show you, copper from room temperature all the way down, just dropped by a, a factor of 20. But here it's a factor of four, five, six. And actually, it's a question is right away. And the message I hear is that there's a temperature called a Critical transition temperature, T sub C. This means C just means critical. It means that at this temperature, the resistance drops to very, very small value. The question is, is it really zero? Is zero or is it just small? So this is a big difference. Of course, that has a, had a huge debate. Many people trying to uh, repeat uh, this kind of work. So but of totally, course, now we know, totally, and this is called a superconductor. Totally, just uh, for clarity, so it's not a discovery of a new medium. It's he's just managed to bring the temperature down for the same medium. Yes. So it's a very, uh, uh, so that uh, uh, discovery, of course, uh, generates many people interested in low temperature physics. So low temperature become very important. So you want to see these kind of phenomena. And uh, this is showing now we have many superconductors. I've just picked a few because this has a function of time. The time is in the horizontal axis and the critical transition temperature here. Uh, when the mercury is about uh, 4.2 Kelvin, started from here, and then you have lead, niobium, and all the way. Until 1970, 80 something, we only get uh, about uh, 23 Kelvin, absolute temperature 23 Kelvin for the highest transition temperature. And then at 1986, these two gentlemen uh, found this new material that gave you about a 40 degree Kelvin, 40 Kelvin for superconducting transition. Of course, then there is a sudden jump to a very high temperature. This is our next speaker. Well, Professor Wu and Professor Chu that made the important discovery of this new material, YBCO, and that jumped by 50 Kelvin. So now it's to 90 Kelvin. It's above the liquid nitrogen temperature. That's the nitrogen usually is in gas phase. If you want it to be in liquid phase, you have to go to, down to 77 Kelvin absolute temperature. Very low temperature, but it's not difficult uh, technologically. And so then you uh, have a man. Right now, the highest temperature we can find of material is 136 Kelvin. It's about 140 degrees below zero Celsius. And uh, now, of course, people are still trying to find room temperature. Can we have a superconductor at, right now at this temperature without cooling? And then we also find some other material. Now, I won't go into yeah, detail. Resistance may make the term chung danje and then resistant in your chamber. That the Gonda Chunga Juba, how coins that the Gulam de Saba Seche and the two Kalakandam Juba Kablaya, that no resistant you are near to a Tamam Se or Islam. So the question then if there's no resistance, we first we just review very quickly why do we have resistance when your electron moving through the material, why do we have resistance? You know, there's uh, several reasons, but simplest reason is that we have an impurity, disorder, defect, and no crystal is perfect. There's always some other things that uh, doesn't belong, and so you're causing charge moving, bump into that, go backward, and then cannot go through easily. So you put resistance, that's very easy to understand. The second one is more the interesting is that actually the atom does not sit there. The atom are always vibrating. That's how we put in sound here. I'm talking, you can hear it, it's a sound wave, the air molecule is vibrating. Same in the material. If you hit on a, a, a metal bar, you will hear the vibration sound. That's the sound wave. And that's the atoms are vibrating. And of course, making the electron moving a little bit more difficult. They will bump into the electron, uh, the atoms and the uh, hit each other and they cause resistance. And the, but as temperature goes down, 
this kind of behavior becomes less and less important, and that's why this metal keep on increase their conductivity, resistance getting less and less important at a lower temperature because the atom don't move very much. But unfortunately, atom will always be moving because that's uncertainty principle. Atom cannot be stationary. There's no particle can have absolute stationary unless it has infinite energy. So this uh, is uncertainty principle. Okay, but that's not important. Uh, Electron scattering. Scattering, scattering. Yes. Third level. Yes. With impurities. With a higher motion. Tere tanda te lo kuitu kali ya gulam ne kogen chewa kimsa kai sena gulam kita chacha chorwa ko nalo le ya ya ko re tamba tumba rimu tumba te tanda yo te te gen chik che te gen ni ba te gulam ke chacha te nalo le ya kanda kuran ke chashe ke du yo te kal du te ke zu te ke amades du te ke zu me te kal electron na tan te kal du te ku pe ke to ja che. In the Tal Tuchet in my own time, and then electric the Chacha take a chassis of duty, the Yuku tie to Chu Chung 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 to go to say Nekatune, but so run a Yuku Mata and Nekap Shatu Maris now, and so the certainty principle don't shame. Yeah. So even at the zero temperature, this low loss of Korumuzio Shore. So, but then the so so what is exactly is the nature of electron that is going through? <laughs> firstly, ah, ah, very good f- question. Firstly, you should explain the, what is the ele- electricity. Yeah, yeah. And whether it is just Wait. energy. Charge. En- energy also, you see, I think there must be some particle. Particles, yeah. Without particle, electricity is movement. I think difficult to say. Yes. Even light, some particles. particles yes. Yeah. But they are also wave. <laughs> depends. Depends. It's a two sides of a coin. Depends on which way you want to look at. Many things are two sides of a coin, right? Depends on which angle you look at. Uh, but they have both. Okay? Uh, we'll come to that. Because I didn't just generate this one way. Generator of electricity. Body. So, for example, imagine just take the example of generator, you know, yes. which produces electricity. Yes. So, can you know? Does it make sense to say that that dynamo is like dynamo? Dynamo, depending on the type of material you use, do you yes. generate different types of electricity, or is it just? Same. You know, no, the same. same electricity, just different current amount of uh, how much. Passing through per unit time, uh, you know, this uh, amount of uh, is same. Same. There's no difference. Okay. All the metal transport. Metal lightning, So, for example, lightning is yeah, an electrical charge. charge. Yeah, there's a charge. Yes. But they also have an ion charge. Here, we only talk about electron moving. Ion is fixed. There's no ion motion. Okay. In the light, and they also could have ion charging, ion motion. So that's uh, two different. Ion, of course, can also move. But here, yeah. in the material, like this material, ion doesn't move. move yeah. but the, all the atoms sitting there, hmm? it's the electron that are moving more easily. Of course, unless... Uh, 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 physical also, you see, there's some electricity. Yes. Oh. Yeah, that's why the, they can uh, use the E... No, 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 no. <laughs> EKG the heart to pumping. You had to do a lot of work. So yes. the heart yeah. pumping is also yeah, the yeah, yeah. That's why you can they can check your heart. <laughs> so from where it produced that electricity? So where is the electricity ah, being ah, produced in a body? That's beyond me. <laughs> 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 we'll talk about that later. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, it will produce. Uh, many things moving will produce electricity. <laughs> uh, we come to that. Uh, good question. Uh, okay, so, but of course, uh, electron also have the same charge, so they would have a cool room with partially everybody learned uh, in your uh, school that uh, the same charge will repel each other. So they also hinder the motion of electrons. So then when the electron move in this material, there's many things to make it move difficult. And uh, so the qu- first question is, can the resistance be zero, not 10 to the minus 9 ohm? 
just because you know, maybe he has a lousy equipment, very rudimentary. He cannot measure very accurately. So he got uh, to this looks very small number, but small number is different from zero, as you all know. Zero is a magic number. Uh, doesn't come very often, and it needs a special uh, feeling about that. And uh, so this uh, number could be very small, so many people challenge him. One thing we could... Uh, <laughs> No, not relevant. relevant. Not relevant, yeah. Uh, yeah. Zero said yeah. zero said the zero is a good thing. Young Kurt Sani could punish the one. Zero could charge the one. But zero, yeah, you know, zero is very important because on that end, you know, zero is representation of an absence. Yeah. But at the same time, Although it may nothing do nothing on its own, but when you accumulate them and then combine it with the other numbers, it has a huge function. Yes. No, no. What I mean is that the, uh, in the in the, the real world, we use real numbers. Real number, you can have a many decimal. I can have a zero point 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 oh one. It's not zero. It's still point point oh oh one. Okay. <laughs> but I could only have a point zero 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 zero. No matter how many digit, it's zero. That's different, very different, okay? Real number is uh, different from discrete number. You talk about discrete numbers. Oh, we'll come to that. That's quantum again, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 then we'll come to this. <laughs> now, well, how do we know it's zero or not? So you can imagine, I show you, there's a, you take uh, this uh, material, you put in a uh, battery, you measure the current. Now, if there's no resistance, like what I show here at the bottom, if the resistance equals zero, you have a battery, then you have a current. So what can you do? If you take away the battery, when the current begins to flow, you say, let me take away the battery. What happened? In ordinary metal, you can go home, try it. Before your eyes can even blink, your current already gone. But here, you take away the battery, the current can go on for years years, we're not talking about days, and it has been proved by experiment. experiment. Yeah, this is a proof by experiment. <laughs> and the extrapolation, of course, after two years, they are so bored to, to looking at it, they don't want to do this experiment so, anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. So totally, let me make it, uh, you know, yes. let me understand this. So the, what you are saying is that in a conventional case, when you take the battery out, electricity goes away. Yeah, yeah. But here, because of the zero yeah. you know, uh, Re resistance. Point, resistance. So even when you take the battery that is conserved, that is yes. you know, con containing the energy yes. taken away, yes. the energy is still... Yeah, the current is still flowing still forever. Flowing. In principle, it's forever. Of yeah. course, nothing is forever. So I say essentially it's forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's connected. It's a loop. So it's they a make loop. this material, they just add a, and start the current and take away the battery and then the current just go on, go on. Go it's on. a loop. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, so it would uh, go on. The experiment lasts about two years, I think, if I remember correct. And then they just stop it. Okay. Uh, because they cannot measure the appreciable difference. So the extrapolation is, it will go on forever. And the law uh, survey should the law, you learn the law, yeah, man, and the law, the sign of mass of the degrees, because experiment change well, this, of course, against all the intuition, ordinary experience we have. But here I'm just saying that, uh, so this is uh, experiment evidence. So the superconductivity in practical is zero resistance, not approximately zero. Not because he doesn't have a good equipment, instrument to measure it. So it is a quantum effect. And that right away clarify this is not your ordinary classical word. We talk about not a real number continuous. There's a jump. It's zero. Uh, we have to be so. Then you know discrete word of one zero two minus one very well defined. But once we come to real number point oh oh one oh 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 one, uh, okay. There's many decimal. Uh, so what exactly zero is a bit tricky. Here it is very clear. There's nothing, no 
absence of resistance. So this is also has to be a macroscopic, not microscope, not like hydrogen atom. It's just one very small thing. Here, this is a big material, a loop of uh, superconductor currents going. We can see it's macroscopic. All the electrons, about 10 to the 22 electrons per centimeter cube, are doing this. No bumping each, into each other, no resistance. Impurity, they cannot see impurity, defects, they just go through. Superconductivity, the conductor's So, Professor, so in terms of, so Professor, in terms of the size, just to help us, you know, the, 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 the uh, non-physicist here. I will show you the is, next, uh, the, the the one, the size is centimeter, or yeah, uh, or even now they have wires, uh, even kilometer long. So. Uh, Size is not an issue. Sure, okay. uh, it's just ordinary material we see. You don't have to be nano material, don't have to be micro. So this is uh, showing, th there's another interesting property of this material besides zero resistance. It's called a Meissner effect. It has a very strange property interacting with the magnetic field. So you put a magnet, this one is a magnet. This is a superconductor. Uh, this is just draw some drawing. This is for the anniversary, uh, 100 years anniversary from a magazine that you see this, uh, your, this magnet levitate. There's no touching. So it's against gravity. It moves upward. Once it becomes superconducting, you below the temperature, the magnet lifts up. It's called a levitation, magnetic levitation. So that's another strange behavior. Somehow, the magnetic response of the material is different from usual metal. So the medium material, is it a, a kind of a, a human construct, some kind of fabrication? A special? No, 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 just a magnet, ordinary magnet. No, 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 the, 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 the conductor. Oh, the conductor, superconductor is one of those uh, high temperature superconductors we just showed. What the, he, in his lab, we show this uh, every, uh, we, uh, very often to our open house, to everybody can come to see levitation, okay? No, no, this is a superconductor, you just cool it, just uh, make it go to lower temperature, this is actually the ni liquid nitrogen, that cool it, and then this uh, a magnet, original setting here, and then just, I, I, I couldn't, I didn't show the film, actually there is a movie, but I mean, the, the, because of time, the magnet setting there, then you cool the temperature down and the magnet will, <laughs> will <laughs> Yes, that will come down. Yes, that will, I will come down. Yes, I will come down to that. Yes, yes, yes. I will explain that. Oh. Yeah, this is, I'm just describing the phenomena. No theory, no model, nothing, okay? Just what you can observe. Mm -hmm. Nothing more than that, okay? And then one realized there are two kinds of superconductors. They under magnetic field behave very different. Imagine looking at this line, this is temperature, this is field, but look at this line. You go from very high temperature, you come down to here, suddenly you below this critical temperature, you see no resistance in this part. Now you're applying a f magnetic field to this material. The interesting thing is the first part you see is that when you apply the magnetic field, the field is being repelled outside the material. See this shape? That's the superconductor, the field. 
expanded. That's what I observed by this gentleman called Meissner. So this is called Meissner effect. And this state called Meissner. So when you apply a field, the field being repaired. Then if you apply higher and higher field, you could just go to the normal state. That's called a type one superconductor. Or the other kind of superconductor is the, you, even more interesting is you have a mixed state. The field can penetrate, but not randomly. Penetrate in a very special way. And uh, I will come back to that. This also involves another Nobel Prize. Okay, this is uh, another interesting state. But in all these states, resistance is zero. So the state changes. You first, you don't let the magnetic field get into the material. But it's too strong. They cannot hold it off. You can move in, but you move in a very special way. Oh, okay. Uh, the chairman is uh, Given the effect that we are seeing here, where it it seems to be a function of primarily over cooling yes. the temperature. You have to be yeah. in that state, sure. lower the so the question to, is Otherwise, you are in the normal sure. state. Nothing. So the question is Solanis is asking is that at some point the 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 magnet the magnet sort of bounce off yes. and levitate. Yeah. So which seems to suggest some of it's it's kind of you know bypassing the gravity force. Yes. So because there's another force. Okay. To so counter the, so the gravity. question is this. So if that then means I will come down to. gravity is somehow related to the temperature, does that mean in the earth no, some no, parts no. are hotter? No, 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 some parts are cooler. So does that have a no, different no. gravitational pull? Okay, no, no. Not the gravity is not related. Is this material the properties relate to temperature? Gravity is a matter of yeah, but the, the the reason why the originally it was holding is because of the gravity, isn't there? Yes. Yeah. But there's no force to push it back. But once you are below this temperature in the superconducting state, there is a force to push it. I will show you right yeah. away. Be patient. Be patient. <laughs> I will show you right away. Yes, that's what I will show. The next one, okay. So I will, we will discuss this, why it's come out, okay? We will discuss, you will see. It's a very logic reason, very simple reason one can understand. Of course, you have to buy certain <laughs> scenario. But uh, the first scenario you have to buy is this uh, three gentlemen propose a theory to describe what happens, why this very strange phenomenon occur. Now, they are, proposal is very interesting. They say that uh, we probably have a pair of electrons. Electrons, instead of moving along, like usual normal metal, they actually pair together. How do they pair? They actually have a, a charge, mass, and spin. So the two electrons, the same mass, same charge, but they could have a different spin. One is a spin up, one spin down. And this spin up and spin down form a pair. Okay. And usually, this have an equal number of upspin and downspin in the metal, and unless you apply magnetic field, then we'll talk why the magnetic field called has strange behavior. It's related to this. So now we have a, instead of each individual electron, imagine you have a many pairs. So if we have a hundred electron here, there are fifty pairs. They form pairs. Okay, this is called a Cooper pair. And that's of, uh, a general professor's name, Cooper, and uh, he said that we should have a pair to explain this. And then, let me go then quickly, but the electrons all carry the same charge, it's supposed to repel each other. How can they form a pair? Where is the attractive attraction come from? They should hate each other, but somehow they don't. <coughs> what happens? And the, the explanation, this particular paper, very amazing paper that show that if you think about it, we have iron in the material, which is positive charge, electron is negative charge. So when the iron moves, one electron sees, ah, this iron, good, they are opposite charge. So he comes and then he vibrates, there's another electron sees, 
positive charge and comes, and they looks like these two electrons love to be near each other. So they become effectively attractive. Okay, even though they were supposed to repel. But if there's another media to provide a glue attraction, then they become possible. So repulsive become, uh, sorry, uh, this is, and so that is uh, you know, the, the, the schematic show that two balls actually now become a pair. Two electrons, of course. Uh, this uh, vibration mode is the uh, sound mode. So that works, of course. This theory has been checked billions of times, so uh, many predictions. Now let's imagine how we understand that. This is the important part. Now, how do we understand all this phenomena? Think about a very huge ballroom. You have uh, playing walls. People are dancing. Many, many pairs are dancing in this beautiful ballroom, following the rhythm. And nobody bump into each other. And there are tables, there are columns, but they just go around. And they exchange partner. You remember, you see the movie, old movie, they're dancing very beautifully, exchange partner, moving around. Every, nobody is sitting there. Everybody is moving, dancing, but nobody bumping into each other. Just imagine this uh, lady is a spin down electron. The gentleman is spin up electron. Okay. Think about that, and then now you think, I have a hole, put the 10 to the 22 electrons here. And they are all doing this. What a beautiful thing. <laughs> you couldn't think of anything much more beautiful, amazing than this. And they are all dancing, because they're all dancing in the same rhythm, coherence. There's no bumping, no hitting, even there's a column like a defect or impurity, there's table, they just dancing. And this is the beauty of this state. Electrons somehow or collectively move in a coherent way. Okay, that's a special kind of quantum. They exchange partner, we have a, they can even exchange partner. If they don't exchange partner, this is called a, another kind of quantum state, fluid. It's called a Bose Einstein condensate. Bose is uh, gentleman from India, uh, great physicist. So this is what you want to imagine. Now you imagine you have this music, playing, huge number of pairs are moving, and they don't bump into each other, and they exchange partners, of course, because here you have a face. Imagine the gentleman has a mask. All the gentlemen, same height, same dress. All the lady with the mask, same height, same dress. You cannot tell who is your pair. You change pair, you fall around. And that's exactly what happens in the this system. Coherence for the, for the microscopic, microscopic now. quantum state. state. Yes. The, now, the, the, uh, the quantum negative door, and the rabbit negative, yeah, shout to raise, then the electron ticket, the chicky chicky cube, a storage, and the susu, that's it. The sun is such a job. That's it. And it's a man yamru, Tony, Yambo, then the whole chimpanzee dance and Yamang Puzzi. As a chili dance, shall tap you. And then chicky chicky. Okay, that would be fair. Okay, okay. So, uh, anyway, so let me go quickly. Yeah, you get coherent individual one. So you may still have sometimes one, one person slip and they get a bump, but that's very small. One out of a 10 to the 20, we don't really care. Now, we, let me explain the magnetic field. It's very strange behavior, this Meissner effect. But when you apply field to this, what is exactly happened to electron is they have a different number of spins for up spins and down spins. That is the number. Now you imagine in this hallway, there's more gentlemen than ladies. Then what happened? How do you dance? But each one still want to dance with the lady a pair. So there's always some of them left alone. And they don't like it. Superconducting state don't like it, they hate this. And uh, when they hate it, what happened? They are smart. They just push the field outside the 
outside the wall, hall, hallway. So the field is outside, then you have an equal number here, then they are all happy. What the Dalai Lama said, be happier. So they want to be happier. Uh -huh. So they get very happy to push the field outside. That's my thing. The field, look at oh, the field. The field is pushed outside. Look at the drawing. Now let me just show you. This is what happened. It's, in reality, it's what happened is when the magnet here, in usual matter, we all know, it produces shielding current. And this shielding current has the right magnitude that pushes the field. So you see the field is bent. The magnetic field line from north to south is bended. And this bending lift up against gravity. So you have a force, move it upwards. Uh, otherwise, it will not. And so this is uh, the current. So it's a shielding current actually occur in this state and all the fear outside, and everybody is happy inside. No problem, okay? So they, they know how to be happy. <laughs> but if you apply stronger fear, how do they make them happy? They cannot repair, it's too much to repair them. Then what they do? They even smarter. They say, okay, I cannot repair you. What I do is I, I confine you. I make all the fear occur in a small region, but separate them periodically, like a column. So now I have all this column essentially made of this magnetic flux line. This is called the flux, quantum flux, made it into a periodic array. This is array, this is called a vortex lattice. Aprikosov has a name because he got Nobel Prize 2003 for this work. Uh, and uh, so they are even smarter. Now I cannot all repair you. So you can join us, but you have to be in certain very nice positions. Then we can still be resistance zero. Okay? The, so now you see, they, they like to be happier. They are smart. But if you go too much fear, then you can see all these uh, flux, uh, quantum flux would begin to touch each other. Then there's no way. Superconducting become normal. Okay, so one can explain this, uh, this, this line. You go up from here, you first repair, then you confine, then you become normal. Magnetic field by Chirutanje. Kurunaga Kurunal, the electron Damarab in a Shadan and Sulayag to the field Yachirtanjik. Yana and field such a deep Yan Nunju Suje, Dina Lolia and the quantum effect Nyayata. Good Namjudamata. So the dancing continues, okay? And uh, then we now just two more. Like, there we there, okay? Another unforeseen consequence of repairing in this coherent state is the loss of charge identity. What do I mean by that? You remember two electrons are supposed to have the same charge. According to Coulomb law, they should always repair each other. Now they do not. So it means effectively they don't see each other as same charge. Okay? This is an unforeseen consequence. When they wrote the paper, they didn't realize. Then they realized this is related to uh, Dr. Lee's yesterday's talk. This is a uh, so I won't be bothered, but effectively is the identity of original electron has lost. In our jargon, we say change to a different quantum state, have different quantum number. But in, in simple interpretation is the electron don't remember it's an electron anymore. So now comes the discussion. When you're superconducting is, um, so essentially I lay the, uh, groundwork for this supernova. The next two talks probably are all related to supernova, so you will learn a lot more. But here I'm just showing a very simple picture. Just imagine the ballroom dancing, okay? And uh, they all behave coherently. Defense and interoperability no longer matters. Uh, do we have an analog phenomena in real world? Hmm. Interaction between electrons play a dominant role in the emergence of new physical property. It's because of interaction. So now interaction is very interesting, very important. So we talk about isolated electron, we understand everything about it, 
but when we put 10 to the 22 electrons together, completely different. They behave very differently. They forgot what they were. <laughs> So we were asked to produce some questions on that. But, uh, <laughs> but in any case, what uh, the picture is very simple. This electron paired and they move around, dancing around. They no longer like remember they are the same electron in the normal state at a high temperature. They are different. They have a different charge. Spin actually I didn't talk about also different. They they are entangled like yesterday. Each pair is exactly the entanglement pair discussed by two professor Chess yesterday. And so exactly that entanglement pair. Each one is entangled. So actually, each one is entangled with every other one. All the spin up, all the spin down. That's an interesting. But anyway, this is a, a, a theory, a model that we use to explain millions and millions of experiment results related to superconductivity. And it works surprisingly well. Works very well. And, uh, but uh, we still keep on finding new interesting phenomena. So, because this is not our common reality, but this is real, okay? Because everything I talk about is being proved by experiment and theory, okay? And, uh, but still, the, the emerging of a new macroscopic phenomena, and in that state, the electron has lost its original identity. identity. Thank you. Your, your holiness, please. Comments and comments. <laughs> <laughs> Tama so one uh, thing that is uh, sort of a major contrast, a point of contrast between the way in which you know the physicists are you know presenting reality here versus the way in which a classical tradition like the Buddhist philosophy would look at reality is the way that the 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 so for example like the, in in the classical tradition like buddhism when we you know engage in exploration of reality um, the, the approach is to first come up with I the big picture. I think not necessarily Buddhism, ancient Indian, Indian tradition. Indian tradition, yeah. So, um, so for example, so yesterday we talk, talked about uh, the conditioned things, which are you know constantly changing, impermanent things. So you look at the world and say, okay, there are two broadly different types of phenomena. One is things that are subject to change; they are momentary, yeah, yeah, okay. impermanent. But then there are things which are not that momentary, they are unconditioned. And within the conditioned world, then you have um, matter. 
which are which has some obstructive properties, which has mass, which has you know extensions, spatial extensions, and so on. Then you also have uh, another fundamental category, which is what in Buddhism or in the in the classical Indian tradition would refer to as consciousness or the world of mind, which is the primary characteristic is that of subjectivity. It's a subject of experience. Then you also have part of your taxonomy of the world, reality, certain things which are neither mental nor physical. So for example, like the attributes of impermanence or time or the concept of person. So those are part of your description of reality, but they're not objects in the world, nor are they subjects of experience. So you make a broad category. So, so then if you look at the quantum description uh, or the physics description, it seems to be really staying at this first category, which is really about the matter. So the one question his holiness would like to ask you is, you know, yesterday we were talking about space, space time uh, symmetry. So in, the, in that context, when you use the word space, is it conceived as a kind of a, a, a base composed of particle? That's what uh, depends on what land scale you're talking about. This is important. In physics, we always separate different energy scale, different land. You talk about very small land scale, you talk about the very high energy, now you talk about like a material here, we talk about the energy scale is small, electron volts uh, below that. So it's a different, we have a different kind of a tools and different the principle apply because they behave differently. Yeah. The, the one, this uh, particular idea that uh, we have a macroscopic uh, quantum condensate of all these pairs actually was used in Dr. Lee's discussion yesterday. So it's used in the cosmology, yes. space time. Okay, this principle. So what we learn is that maybe learning one material, you say, ah, so interesting, this is a material. But the fact is, when we learn from one material, what we learn, the knowledge, actually can be applied to many. Actually, this also in, happened in neutron star. Okay? So this is a, the, the kind of idea seems to be very restricted, but actually it has a profound effect because it brings in many new thinking and that could be applied to different parts of the... Sure. If his uh, holiness has one last short comment we can do, otherwise yeah, we, we need to move on. Yeah, I think we can move on, yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Can you sign it for me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is this? A universal universe. In a single atom. Our next speaker is Professor Mao Kun Wu. Uh, he's also an uh, academician of uh, Academia Seneca uh, in Taiwan. And he will be giving us, uh, telling us about superconductivity, a novel quantum state. Your Holiness, Professor Li, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's really my great pleasure and honor today to uh, speak to you uh, a subject that you have to learn from Professor Lee a lot of detail about the fundamental physics. So what I'm going to do here is that as you can see from the first chart, I have a two nice picture which is show the structure of the material we are working on. So what I'm going to talk about is, well very briefly just remind you what superconductivity are and then, yesterday we have a very vibrant discussion 
His Holiness also talk about as a scientist, we should be doing something good for the humanity. We should not do something distract, right? And so I'm going to just show you a little bit about what superconductor can really do for human society. Okay, so it's an application that has been already in uh, going on. And then I talk about some of the recent discoveries on superconducting material. But my focus will be the last part, to talk about what this interesting phenomena, but what kind of material, what do we learn now? Of course, it's an open question. We still are not sure what's going on exactly, but there is some hint. Okay, so I'm going to show you what we know today. Let me just uh, remind you quickly the zero resistance, as uh, Professor Lee mentioned, and the so-called Meissner effect, which has the perfect diamagnetism, are the two pillars of superconductivity. And that leads to this interesting phenomenon. It's not like that levitation, you can suspend it. The magnet here, the, the picture show here, this is the magnet. This is the superconductor that cooling below this uh, transition temperature. It's not only just levitate, but it can suspend it down still. If that, that exactly can be explained by Professor Lee's the last velgraph, you have a different view. The view penetrates in form into the vortex core. And then essentially then you have attraction and repulsion together. So you can show this kind of behavior. So this is a real interesting. Uh, so this, I don't know why it didn't go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, go back. Okay, so this is the true novel quantum state that can be seen macroscopically. You can sit on the table while this is going. If I have a chance to bring the liquid nitrogen here, then we can show it today. <laughs> but anyway, so this is a macroscopic phenomenon. Okay. And let's see what it can do to human society. Uh, as we mentioned, the zero resistance, so we can make it into wire that can carry current, uh, transmit the power without any energy loss, okay? So that is already going, and uh, there is a proposal, well, maybe one day we'll see this kind of super grid thing using superconductor to connect all the electricity that save a lot of power, especially if we uh, have uh, power from solar, from a wind, and we need a better transmission to do that, okay? And this is our dream. Hopefully, you can see that in the near future. And we can have a high-speed, real high-speed train. And this is a true model uh, in Japan, uh, has been running for several years. It's a 20-kilometer long track. It's a levitation train. And this train can run up to 550 kilometer per hour. That's the test right now. But the, in principle, if you put in vacuum too, then you can go up to 1,600 kilometer per hour. Okay, it's the energy saving and so on. So that's another dream. We hope to come true. And there are many medical applications already uh, going on. And this is a special device called using this a very sensitive uh, superconducting material. We go there's a phenomenon called a quantum interference effect. It's a related to the quantum phase uh, idea. And we can use this kind of a superconducting quantum interference picture to make in a device, which it has a very sensitive uh, detection to a small signal. Uh, Johannes, you are talking about the heart may be beating, you give some electricity. So we are using electrical a graph, it's easy to match that. Now we can use this squid because the small signal, you can give you a dipole, a small magnetic signal. So you can use that to detect the heartbeat. And the beauty of that is not only to see you, if especially for a um, pregnant woman, you can see both the infant, uh, the baby, and the mother. 
without intrusion. Okay, so that's a very beautiful uh, uh, application for that. And we can look at that. It's already been going on for years in the brain science. Okay. So basically, it just becomes much more sensitive to the yeah, yeah, very, smallest very sensitive. signals. Yeah. Right. Very small signal can give up. So like a brain wave, this is the for brain signal, okay, and has been using. And of course, everybody know about this MRI, okay. This is essentially using this uh, superconducting magnet. Uh, Professor Lee talked about if you have a current at a loop, and without even charging, it continuing flowing. The mag magnetic field will be in there. So when you cool down and set up, it'd be there for, okay, forever. And we can use that for very important energy research. The, the, the so-called uh, uh, particle, the heat particle was discovered in this machine, and mainly because it's, they have such a high magnetic field uh, generated, which is such a high energy. This is a picture that uh, from Academia Seneca that we have collaborated and built a very large array of a telescope. I think Professor Lee really make a major contribution to get the money to do this. Okay. <laughs> and that is important for understanding the universe. And the key component is using superconductor to detect the signal. And we can also use the device to uh, evaluate like an uh, aircraft. So if there is any crack or any material has a failure without any, you know, kind of non destructive uh, evaluation. So there are many, many applications is going on here. Okay? So uh, I think the superconductor become more and more important because of certainly this is a potential application for human society. However, there's a question we critically have to ask. Well, as uh, Professor Lee mentioned, you need to cool the material down to a certain temperature in order to see the property and the function. So we need to find a material that, whether we can have a, a round room temperature or even higher, so we don't need this complicated system. No Com need to use complex causality. Um, so we need to, so this is an important part, what we are working on, try to find different kind of new material. And this is the reality, you know, this is interesting phenomenon, but what's the real world we are working on? And Professor Lee mentioned that things that discovered from 1911, up to 1986, over three quarters of a century, the increase of the superconducting temperature is very slow. Okay, so, but fortunately, two scientists from Switzerland found this particular material. Very, I'll come back to that, okay? And that shows superconducting property, not that high, but it indicates there's a potential that you have something new, a different. Because this material, if you look at it, uh, without this bearing here, if I don't have the bearing add on, it's an insulator. It's a very poor conductor, not conducting at all. Only I replace a little bit of uh, lanthanum by the bearing atom, it suddenly becomes metallic and then eventually superconductor. Okay, so we have a new paradigm to look at. And uh, very luckily, uh, I was in the U.S. at that time in Alabama, and uh, my student and I in the lab, well, in 87, I find that another set of material, which is showing here with this structure. And the interesting thing is this material has three times higher transition temperature. Okay. Okay, and then later on, okay, this is the search now going almost 30 years. We're trying to, still trying to look for this uh, room temperature. Uh, we call this the holy grail of our uh, superconductivity. Now, 
then we have, as a scientist, then we have to understand why this material compare with the previous one, this left side here, and the right hand side here. Why the T tem transition temperature can have a three times difference? If you look at the basic units, it's the same. Here you have a copper oxygen as a prime. And with the, this is oxide, oxygen. And with some lanthanum, well, this is kind of cubic, distorted. But in this, if you look at on one simple way to look at it, it looks like that I'm cutting this uh, um, A phase system, octahedral, right? And then cut into half. Then I have a, a two pyramid. And somehow in between, let's insert another element. But in the meantime, in this part, I take some oxygen out. And I have a two dimensional become a just one dimensional chain from the structure point of view. Eh? Then the superconducting property is different. However, of course, we know the superconducting all still coming from this region, this plant here. Okay. Here I want to remind you here, in this system is the barium replaced a little bit of the lanthanum atom. Okay, original is the two lanthanum, one copper, four oxygen, four meter one unit. And when I replace a little barium, then it becomes metal and superconducting. And in this part is one yttrium, two barium, three copper, with seven minus x. And this x is important. If I have a 0.5, like a 6.5 oxygen, this material is insulated. It's not super, not conducting at all. Because what is this group study? Okay. So the material really rich, really beautiful. So I start making slightly the chemical change. Here, I change into the bearing, and here I add a little bit more oxygen. And that's called. That. So, the material base for all this copper oxide material to become superconducting is to introduce electric carrier. Yeah, to introduce electrical carrier to the original insulating material by changing chemical stoichiometry either by substituting element in with this the so-called 214 system or changing oxygen concentration in one, two, three. But a theorist like a Professor Lee, then he would say, yeah, this is your material world. But as a physicist, what is this? That's what his picture will tell you. He said, in this original insulating material, okay, as I mentioned, there's a copper oxygen plant, copper oxygen form. And every copper has one electron, you know, because the D electron, and you count it, it has one extra electron. And every electron has a spin. So it occupy one side. And because you have an electron electron cooling interaction, and this electron here, if I want to bring another electron in, it costs a lot of energy. You know, it's like a uh, your hand is sitting here, you squeeze in too much energy, right? So this seat can have one person. So I cannot move. So, so, uh, so in this case, yeah, in this case, I have to quietly sitting here, I cannot move. All the electrons have to be sitting here, cannot move. So there is no conducting. Electron cannot move around. You cannot carry. So in, in, in Buddhist um, you know, analysis of matter, also categories are made of different types of matter. Yes. You know, things that are tangible, 
and has special extension, things that are not tangible, but still part of the matter. Mm. So there are different kind of you know, material objects are identified here. Yeah. I see. Okay. So what, what we do chemically, this is chemists, chemists are doing, by changing the stoichiometry, what he's doing is that it's to replace that chemistry. However, the physics to see it, it the effect is that uh, one electron is being taken out. If one extra, one bearing go into the lanthanum side, then one electron is taken out. Or one oxygen put it in, add onto this original empty oxygen place, then one electron is taken out. So I'm moving out one electron. And the beauty of this is, if I have an empty space, then stuff can move because this thing can move here. Or this one can move. So this room. This is the same thing. Electron 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 is the same thing. So this is the basic picture now. Most people agree for this material to have. Why? It becomes metal. Okay. So this come with a very interesting for the past 30 years, a lot of work, and has just an interesting so-called phase diagram. And here we are showing this is the number of dopant or the number of electrons essentially, or the whole here we talk about uh, the positive charge. And here's the temperature, okay? So you're coming from a very original uh, insulating, has uh, some magnetic features, state, and gradually become metal, and then down to this region is we call a superconducting region. And there are many rich phenomena. Well, you ask Professor Lee, he said, I don't understand at all yet. We don't understand. So this is the current work. We are trying to really understand the full spectrum. However, however, this all come from this very simple copper and oxygen feature. Very simple structure here. So this is how theory, as experimentalists are working very hard to understand today, even today. And luckily, well, here's the question, you know, why there are so many competing orders in this simple copper oxygen based high TC material. Okay? But very fortunately, nature is very kind to us. So in 2008, we found this interesting new material. Has similar feature is the iron, also the D transition metal, like uh, copper. Uh, with the selenium, certainly, certainly the same column as oxygen, right? But it's the one layer here, and you s continue stacking on, this material becomes superconductor. So it's very simple structure, okay? And it can have a relative high TC also. Up to there, we found uh, 10 years now, then we know it can have a close to 70 K transition temperature. And you can even make it into just single layer <laughs> to make it superconducting. This is uh, very, very uh, intriguing, you know. And, and so we have created a platform to better understand the origin that because the simple structure is always should be able to learn more. And that's interesting that it can have a very important application also, okay. So the last 10 years, we spent a lot of effort and many people work on that. So there is uh, some understanding concerning uh, from high temperature down to low temperature when it becomes superconducting. And the similarly, there is that, uh, such a phase diagram predicted, you know, or we proposed essentially, that similar to the, you know, you will remember I just showed you for the copper base, and so the superconductivity in this iron selenide is similar to the high TC copper oxide, which is a result from a strong electron-electron correlation. Okay, and as I show here, the many competing order, competing state again, to get to this result. 
And now the question is, what is this? Do we understand, especially from a more realistic point of view, as a experimentally, I like to see what kind of material, what possible to lead this, okay? So we have done some more detailed work, okay? This is a beautiful single crystal, a very fine wire, and uh, we examine that by electron microscope, okay? And then to look at the structure, the diffraction, and also the composition of this material for the ion selenide. And we identified this quite interesting, the ratio between selenium and iron is five to four, which means that iron, four iron with five selenium. But if you look at the original picture I show you, it should be one to one. Ideally, it should be one to one, but why this is five to four? And that gives you this uh, very, I don't know why it suddenly goes this. Anyway. Okay. Well, it gives you a very interesting, beautiful uh, superstructure, you know, from the X-ray and uh, the electron diffraction. So we were able to use um, some very simple analysis to try to pin down why the diffraction is, in addition, those uh, bright spots. There are some beautiful this, uh, small spot, what is this? Okay, and the analysis tell us, if I look at the plane of the ion sitting on, right? So every four ion, then there's one missing. It, it's go periodically, okay? This is only one cell, but like you can see it's periodically. So this kind of an ion, Beckon become a very older state in this particular four to five composition, which means we have a two different ion sites. One is occupied, we call it sitting eye, another site called a 4D site, which is empty. And this material is insulated, just like the yttrium one, two, three with 6.5 oxygen. It's not superconducting, it's not conducting at all. Well, I mean, I should not say it's just poor conductor, okay? But this thing, if I add a little bit, just a little bit of actual iron, okay, gradually, what happened is, it? you know, this is two material. The up one is the one not super, not super conducting, that is just insulated. But that bottom one picture is the superconductor. And here I show you is the X-ray picture showing that where there is some uh, diffraction peak going on. Okay, I would just wanted to point out here the t key feature. For a non-superconducting one, look at here. Okay, and we are probing this from room temperature keep going up to a very high temperature. Suddenly, this peak shrink, right? Changing from this two position to that. Okay. So this, this is the insulator material. However, when it becomes superconducting, you see that the X-ray position doesn't move at all. Okay. This is the experimental data. I, this is the. Oh, I think for you, I think I should. People know how we experimentalists are doing work. With this work, then we can do an analysis and to see what the occupation of the atom. And then the conclusion is, this, you know, make it simple. The original empty 4D site was start to occupy. Start to occupy by the iron atom. Okay, in this lower panel here. And we find out when you occupy and you make it more random, which means that I can use different way, okay? My higher temperature and more iron, more randomly, the material become better superconductor. Okay, so the, the, the based on this, the structural study, we can conclude that 
these two sides, you know, 16i and 40, which is empty, um, when it's older, is the insulator, okay? But when I have an extra iron atom or high temperature heat treated, become random, then the 4D sites still start to be occupied. And this occupation leads to electron. Just like uh, what I said earlier, taking out of the certain atom and give you the carrier. And here, we introduce that. So, originally empty, now you start to feel, then you start to see the carrier. Okay, and superconductivity emerge from that. This is just like, you know, so we are seeing this. We have two states in the system. One without, or is the empty, one with atom. Okay, this two state. At a certain point, you can just look like this, you have a domain war. I think in, uh, in cosmology, using this picture to show this, uh, how universe form also, the cable mechanism. And we know if we can do much finer, when we have a very fine mixing, like this one, a lot of it mixing together the material, and I have a very good superconductor. Okay? So, so the key here, from our understanding today, especially from our own research study, okay, the material origin of this high TC, uh, I can conclude this. Both copper-based and iron-based high temperature some form of defect. Either oxygen non stoichiometry in oxide or just the iron vacancy in the iron based material. And they both display similar phase diagrams showing that several very interesting physics state feeding to each other. And there are seem to exist at least two different electronic states that are necessary when you are properly doping. The superconductor was a metallic, and there is a magnetic and non-magnetic. And we know Chinese, we are always talk about this yin and yang, the coexistence. Is this the case? Probably more fundamental is that, as I say here, is it empty, then start to fill. Or here, it fill, then it take back into empty. This is two analogies, but in that up, up here is the real state, real material. And here is the electronic, you know. But that give you, uh, remind you, you know, we have learned from Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu. <laughs> right? Lao Tzu, uh, chapter 11, he said, Dirty okay. spoke meat at a hub because the whole we may use the wheel. Clay is molded into a vessel because of the hollow we may use the cup. You know, if we don't have this empty space, we cannot use that to hold anything. And the wall are built around a heart because of the empty space we may use the house. Like this room, without this empty, we cannot sit in here, listen to your harness, the stock, right? So the conclusion is that two come from what exists, but use from what does not. So that's the nature, right? It seems to play this uh, beautiful uh, consequence. So my question is, is a random occupation to the older NP space the most fundamental cause to novel effect in nature? Awesome. <laughs> It's a random occupation in the order's empty space. It's a random occupation in the order's empty space. So as we see from number two, we need it empty and then start to put in. And then you see something beautiful coming up. Thank you very much. That's all Thank you. So okay. 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 
I think the question also, you know, is this similar to what the middle way you are talking about now? What? The middle way, you are, middle way yeah. in, you know, is this similar to that concept? No. So, Sadan his holiness is just, just curious, it's just um, since we are talking about conductivity, so it's not necessarily directly related to superconductivity, but the basic fact is that some mediums are better at conducting electricity and some are not. So there seems to be you know, objective differences between certain mediums. So, uh, so within the mediums that are actually quite good at conducting electricity, since temperature seem to be a factor, uh, especially with the superconductivity, would would it can one say that the same medium, whether it is discovered in a hotter place versus in a colder place, will you know make a difference in the their ability to conduct? And similarly, metroids, you know, versus, as well as you know now people are going to Mars, so you can bring rocks from Mars. Uh, sorry, not uh, from the moon, and then eventually from Mars, we will have rocks. So will they have different conductive properties or anything, any work done on this? Yeah, comparing? actually, it's exactly. The temperature effect, as uh, Professor Leo already showed, for metal, it goes down. Okay, the conductivity will become so better. better. Yeah, when mm -hmm. the temperature lower, conductivity will become better. For insulator, it's go opposite way. It becomes even more difficult to conduct when you go to low temperature. So temperature does affect the conductivity of the material. Okay. And in terms of uh, the different planet where the, you know, uh, certainly because the formation may be different. And the different material where the conductivity will be different. Different. You know, gold, silver, copper are good conductor. But uh, lead is a very poor conductor can compare with gold, silver. Shining. And what we are talking about here, Metal uh, is the alloy or compound is very, very, the range can be very, very wide. Okay, but it's basically true. Temperature does affect that. Okay. So, what about meteorites and other objects? Well, the meteorite, like, well, no. different material, right? Yes. A lot of meteorites have some iron metal, as I understand. Then the the iron is the so the oh yes so someone was saying that if there are you know especially really good material for superconductivity to be discovered in moon we need to go there <laughs> 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 maybe we can find somewhere here yeah. <laughs> at least uh, construct one Big laboratory lab, lab and carry some investigation yeah. research. Yeah, uh, could I make some comment? Oh, <clears throat> yes. These two are physicists, quantum physicists. I'm a chemist. I look at problem a little differently. So, when Professor Lee talk about superconductivity, he talk about pairs of electron, electron pairs. In so we need to have a tea break. Okay. 
I think I better do after G. Very, very brief, he said. After T. Okay. You're a crown. This is it. After T. Okay. Let's thank the speakers for the exciting talks and we'll continue conversation. We're running a little late, so let's meet back in 10 minutes. Well. Il y a des soucis. So, oh, what you really need to do is to build a dancing hall with a, diff a little different structure. Like, not if you're talking about, like, F-E-S-E, -S -E, you have different mixture in such a way when you build the three-dimensional dancing hall, there are some electron left to pay up to become a dancer. So, like, doping some bedium, in the lanthanum or every structure change a little bit. This is really building the dancing hall with some electron left to be a pair of dancers then dancing around. So these two things are really uh, combined together in one picture. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so the next speaker doesn't need any introduction because it's me. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm from uh, Duke University. So I'm going to share with you uh, some... Uh, work that I done many years ago and that's in quantum transport. So by transport uh, we mean pretty much what professors uh, Lee and Wu were talking about. We're going to put a potential difference between two points and try to measure the current carrying properties of that system. So it's quantum transport because you can only understand the behavior using quantum mechanics. So uh, what I want to focus on are a few points and hopefully uh, this will uh, 
much of the audience has had a chance to hear about uh, question, uh, issues about uh, quantum uh, coherence and, and so forth. And hopefully I will reinforce that and tie everything together so that people can leave with a better sense of what all these terms mean and all these concepts mean. So uh, I would present, uh, well, now it's just going to be one experiment because I'm more, it would have taken much too much uh, time. So one experiment which exists with some key feature, uh, features of quantum systems. And these features are difficult to come to grasp with, uh, in the co classical context. So again, by classical, I mean what we're more uh, familiar uh, in our everyday life. So uh, for this particular experiment, we're going to focus on quantum interference uh, and also the aronoff bohm effect. So uh, this is a, a very special effect in which you can see physical... This is a very special effect that only occurs in, a quantum, in quantum mechanics where you can see the effect of a magnetic field even though your electrons do not move in the region of the main field. Okay, so I want to start in more familiar territory, classical waves. So we're all uh, familiar with, uh, if you have a rope, you yank it a few times, you can see a wave moving down. So that's a classical mechanical wave. Uh, another classical wave would be electromagnetic radiation that Professor Lin, for instance, talked about, the light sh shining down on us. And when there are many, many photons, it's cl more classical. So we're talking about that limit. So uh, I apologize, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, math, but I, I try to put as much uh, physical intuition into it as possible. When you do a wave, it will oscillate up and down periodically. And that's often sinusoidal in its dependence. In addition to that, if you, you will see a drawing in a moment and it will make more sense. So there are certain quantities that characterize a wave. One is how big the wave is. Mm -hmm. If you look at a wave in a pond, there's an amplitude. There's also something called a wavelength. What's the distance between two peaks? There's something called the period, or which is the inverse of the frequency, how often in time before it repeats itself. So that's uh, shown here. So if you take a wave, sinusoidal wave, let's see, uh, all right. Where is the mouse? Oh, there it is, okay. If you take a instant in time, let's call it time equal to zero, and look at it along the, the string that you've shake, uh, shaken, you'll see it'll go up and down and up and down. The height gives you the amplitude. The distance between crests give you the wavelength. And if you did it differently, oh, okay, I didn't, if you do it on time axis, instead of having distance here, you just look at one point and look at the thing go up and down, and time also looks like this. Now, the interesting thing is that if you have two sources, as shown here, if they generate the same type of sine waves, but starting at two different points, and they have this form, then they would be considered to be phase coherent. They will follow the same time dependence. But then when you put them together, you will see places where the amplitude is big and places where amplitude is small. So that's called interference. So the point is that if you add two waves together, you have a choice. This whole object here is called the phase, and there's this extra thing here. 
that controls how shifted the two waves are. The two waves are aligned together. When you add them, you get double. And if they're shifted by 180 degrees, they interfere destructively and you get nothing. That's something very unusual about waves. You get so when, when the interference phenomenon occurs, both <laughs> waves cancel each other out. They cancel each other out if the phase difference is 180 degrees. So will the difference in the force of the wave make a difference when they interfere with each other? I mean, one is a stronger wave, one is a... If they, if one is stronger than the other, the cancellation would not be perfect. It will be, uh, just be reduced. <laughs> So you're talking about natural phenomena. In, in the natural phenomena, there are waves of different forces. The, in fact, uh, if you do this uh, on the surface of a pond, have two sources that are in sync, in phase with each other, you would see regions where uh, it's destructive, where they cancel each other, other regions where they add. You don't gain or lose any energy. It's just that depending on the, the phase difference, so to speak, you can either have construct or anything in between. Okay. So this doesn't happen with, with particles. With two particles, you can't cancel them. Well, we're not going into high energy physics where you have particle and equal. So, okay. So the, the, the really famous experiment started out using light. Okay. So it's the Young's double slit experiment. So there you take a light beam uh, it may work for short distance with this, but usually it's done with laser because with laser, the phase is definite. You don't have randomization, the phase. You shine it through two little openings so only light can go through uh, the two points. Now you look at a screen far away and you will see that the difference in the distance of the two paths, there's a difference in the distance it has to travel. When they travel different distances, the phase difference will be different. Then if you look along the screen, you will see places where the, the interference is constructive, so that they end. Other places it will be dark, or they destroy each other. So this is a wave phenomenon. And in fact, even with these waves, you, you see the separation on the right between the interference patterns. If you make the spacing between the, uh, the slits smaller, make the spacing smaller, the interference actually separate out. And that is a form of the uncertainty principle. So in wave mechanics, you have uncertainty principle built into it. Now, the interesting...